Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Social Live. It is National Tell a Joke Day, so we're going to start this morning off with a, a funny little joke. You ready? I'm ready. All right. How much does your selfie weigh? How much does my selfie weigh? I don't know. In Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Come on, guys. No laughter. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me try one more. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? You're up. You're a poo. No, oh. you're a poo. Wait, a poonicorn. Oh my god. Do you okay. want to try that again? Try uh, wait, that again? I have, I can, I googled good jokes because I knew it was National Do the Self, uh, National Tell a Joke Day. Whoops, I'm mixing up my days. And I found this fun BuzzFeed list of 21 jokes so stupid they're actually funny. And I was testing them out earlier and they actually are pretty funny. Well, I'll just give you one. I'm going to give you one. Okay. What kind of bagel can fly? What kind of bagel can fly? I don't know, Courtney. What kind of bagel can fly? A plain bagel. Oh, boy. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I didn't go for Well, that. everyone's sharing their jokes on Twitter with the hashtag National Tell a Joke Day. So if you're looking for a good laugh while you're in the office today, definitely check out the trending hashtag. And if you want to win this punicorn, because it's the cutest thing you've ever seen. I thought we were giving away this punicorn. You can pick which color you want. We're giving away one. Okay. We're but gonna this, keep one. This punicorn's name is Jules. If you do win this one, say, do you want Jules or do you want the yellow one? Jules or Kim. Jules or Kim. Jules or yeah. Kim. Let us know which one you want to win share when you share the, the episode. episode yes. So share this episode for your chance to win a punicorn. You're going to want this first because everyone's going to have a punicorn soon. I will be celebrating National Do Tell a Joke Day all day. So share your jokes with us. Comment below. Obviously, we need help in the joke area. So let us know. I need a good laugh. We always need a good laugh, right? We all, you got to keep laughing. If you don't laugh, then what's the point? Exactly. All right. So let's kick things off. There's a lot to talk about uh, on Facebook this week. And just to kick things off, let's talk about Facebook's update to the camera. So yesterday, Facebook added the ability to go live and shoot two second GIFs, GIFs and share your full screen text post on colored background. Uh, from your Facebook camera, which lets you share to Facebook stories, direct messaging, and the traditional news feed. So if you combine these camera AR face filters to your live video, they think that you'd be more willing to, to make videos because you'll be able to find a filter that will you know, make you feel more confident to go live or match whatever mood you are feeling that day. And, you uh, tested this out this morning. I did. We both tested yes. it out this morning, and we found this this fun one where you can put a hat on yourself, and you can actually put a hat on three people, maybe four people. Yes. We only tested it with three, and we all had hats on, so it was really fun to use. And I'm going to start playing around in there more because they've got some really great creative features, and I've been saying this for a long time. That's what sets Snapchat apart, the creative that they have available within, within their videos. So I am... Loving this update and what I really like most about it is that even though they've been saying for a while that people are not picking up on Facebook stories, Facebook is still trying and they're still testing out new things and they have 2 billion users to, to test with. So keep going Facebook and I like that you try something new every week. Yes, I completely agree with you, Courtney. And speaking of big Facebook news, Facebook has rolled out their trending news section over the past few weeks. So some of you may have this feature already. And this is Facebook's way of being able to share with its users um, not just one side of the story. So now if you go in your news feed, you're always seeing people sharing news from a, a certain media outlet, and then that's all the news that you're seeing. Here with the Facebook trending stories feature, um, and Kim is showing the, the section on the screen right now and how you can find it, you can see news from all different outlets. All you have to do is go to the trending stories section, the bottom right of your uh, mobile app, scroll down to the trending stories and you can see everything that's trending and then scroll horizontally to the right and you can see all of the different uh, news publications. I think this is a really great update. Facebook really has to be able to combat what everyone's been saying has been fake news and it's a way of really being fair. And as I've been saying for a long time now too, I get all of my news from Facebook so now I can go into a separate section and just get all my updates all in one place, in a place where I'm already spending all my time. So 
I love this one again. I'm full of love this week. And I predict that Facebook is going to add the trending stories feature uh, to the bottom of the mobile news feed so you can easily just click trending stories and not have to search for it. So I think that's coming next. I think Let's it's gonna replace so. I think it's gonna replace the marketplace feature. Because I don't know who's using that. <laughs> Jules is using that. Jules, Jules uses it all the time just to browse. She's a Facebook window shopper and she doesn't <laughs> buy anything. She just browses. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there like Jules. And if you are like Jules, let us know below how are you using the Facebook marketplace. And in more Facebook news, and this is our last Facebook update of the day, right? Yes. Yes. It's Facebook Watch. So last week, Facebook launched Watch, a new home, uh, a new home for original video content produced exclusively uh, by its partners. And the Watch tab and several dozen original shows have started rolling out to a small group of U.S. users on mobile, desktop, and Facebook's TV apps. And the watch features actually personalize all of the recommendations of live and recorded shows to watch, plus categories like most talked about, what makes people laugh, shows your friends are watching, and I, I'm, I really love this update yet again. <laughs> Lots of love for Facebook this week. Uh, I watch a lot of my content on Facebook, also on Instagram, and I'm looking for a new show to watch, so thanks Facebook. I'm excited to see what the options are. And this is really great news for publishers who are looking to earn more ad revenue. Publishers can choose whether or not they want to have ad breaks during their content that is on Facebook. Uh, so it's going to be another way to, to earn more money. So I am also loving this update. I can't wait to watch all the new shows. And we're looking forward to this rolling out to everyone on Facebook very soon after their initial test here in the U.S. So Facebook, way to go. It's been a busy week. I do have week. a tip for Facebook, though. All right, Court. My tip is if you are producing content, don't put commercials in it or don't put advertising, uh, advertisements in it. Netflix does not do this, and I think that's one of the beneficial uh, aspects of watching Netflix. You can watch the whole thing straight through. You can watch the whole series straight through. And I personally don't like being interrupted. <laughs> Well, I think a lot of people are going to disagree with you because money, publishers money. want to be able to make money. You can make and you money in other to... ways. You can make money in other ways. Putting sponsored content into, exactly. the actual, exactly. into the actual show. Well, we're going to get more to sponsored content in just a bit, but let's switch gears and talk a bit about Snapchat. So Snapchat rolled out a new feature this past week. It is called... CrowdSurf. So this new feature on Snapchat allows users to be able to really watch concerts while they're live from all different angles. So essentially users, let's say you're live at the Britney Spears concert in Las Vegas because that's where we wish we could be every single day. We could watch the CrowdSurf feature and everyone who is taking snaps, uh, the Snapchat AR, AI intelligence is going to pull together all different snippets of the song, so you'll be able to see all different angles. So this is way of Snapchat trying to continue to innovate and keep users really excited about new features on the app. Now, I have a feeling that Instagram and Facebook is probably gonna copy this feature because it's really good. Yeah, and I don't typically go to concerts, and now I have even less of a reason yeah. to go. I can just watch on Snapchat, so I was thinking, are ticket was. sales going to go down? Because mm -hmm. you don't actually have to you don't even have to go to the concert anymore. I was thinking about this when Snapchat launched the feature where we could um, already see on maps where everyone was. I was already able to see all the concerts. I saw that Backstreet Boys concert, I think it was Backstreet Boys, over at uh, Barclays Center a couple weeks ago. Didn't have to go, so ticket sales might go down, but Snapchat stock, maybe it'll start going up. Oh, that's a good one. There you go. All right, the moment you've been waiting for, uh, we have a very, very special guest with us today, Ulia. Her influencer account, her Instagram account is at Ulia, at U-L-I-A-A-L-I, uh, -A -A -L -I, so be sure to, to follow her. And we met, uh, we met her actually through our influencer marketing department. We have partnered with her uh, for several of our brands, and uh, we just love her. Thank you, I love you guys too. Well, we're so excited to have you here today because we want to share with our audience really what it's like to be an influencer and get into your you know, mind and your life and what it's all about. So we definitely have a couple of questions for you today, but thank you so much for coming on. Thank so to get started, how did you get started becoming an influencer? How did it evolve into what it is today? It was such a long 
road because I started in 2005 when blogging wasn't even a thing. I had a live journal, a diary, where I had this community of people who contribute and had this online magazine that I, then I started the uh, first uh, blog in Azerbaijan, which is my country, and uh, then I had like a museum blog. I had so many blogs before I moved to New York and started my Today and Yule Ali Instagram page. And it grew so quickly, I didn't even imagine it will take off so rapidly. Yeah, so check her out. She posts awesome content. And I have to ask, because I always wonder, what has surprised you the most about being an influencer? Oh, good question. Um, I see what surprised me the most, how caring and engaged people are. I didn't imagine I will touch so many people's lives. So many people will text me how I inspired them or help them to cope with their breakups because I shared my stories of breakups and heartbreaks. And it was just wonderful how many people connect, connect with you and ask you questions on from something like relationship advice to something like how do you style your hair. And it feels like I have so many girlfriends all over the world and it's amazing. Have you met a lot of the people uh, or met new friends through Instagram? I met my husband <laughs> on Instagram, so <laughs> yes, I met my husband on Instagram. I met a couple of my best friends on Instagram as well. Even before I started blogging, just when I, you know, when I got on Instagram, because Instagram is a place to be. But yeah, you can find love on Instagram. That's I, I'm just True saying story. it. Yeah, it happened wow. to me. <laughs> I just wanted to share, because we share this with brands all the time, that engagement on Instagram is really what matters. So even beyond how many people like your photo or how many people are following you, you have genuine relationships with the people that are following you and you're interacting with them in a private way in DMs and convincing them or influencing them to, to buy things. So brands, if you're watching, Definitely uh, pay attention to that and ask influencers uh, how often they're engaging and, and interacting with their fans offline. And speaking of brands, how do you decide what brands you really want to work with and post about? Well, sometimes I reach out to brands that I personally love, but sometimes when a brand reaches out, I have to do a little bit of research, I test their products, so I don't say yes to everyone. So if you see a brand on my page, you know I personally love it and I recommend it and I put my 100% of trust in this brand. And this is something that's really important because you want to, if you are a brand, you want to be sure that the influencers who are posting about it genuinely do love your product and it's not just, you know, another photo with another hashtag. So I think it's great that you're really authentic in everything that you do and really only choose to work with brands that you truly love and feel passionate about. I think it's more important.
look forward to seeing you next week on Social Live. Have a good week, everyone. Bye, Bye guys.